Doctor. Welcome to another special edition of Face to Face. Gregory Irons, you are face to face with all the viewers here at OneWrestling.com. Welcome. Thank you for having me, Bill. I appreciate it. Well, we're thrilled to have you. You know, we've had a lot of very unique individuals on here, and you are one of, if not the most unique individual we've had on here. Uh, one of the reasons we brought you on uh, is, of course, to discuss the ECWA Super 8 tournament. This is the 16th annual one uh, going on by that organization, and you are one of the uh, field of eight, and uh, that will be taking place on April 7th in Newark, Delaware, at the Greater Boys and Girls Club. And you fans can go to uh, ecwaprowrestling.com and find out all about it. But before we talk about the field of competition, I want to talk about what makes you so unique. You're a pro wrestler, but you're not an ordinary pro wrestler. And before we actually talk about, well, what's, let's say, uh, different about you, I'd like to show uh, a little video clip of a WWE superstar uh, who came to uh, came to speak about you very recently. Okay, we'll be right back. Take a look at this. Understand a word anybody says on this microphone when I'm sitting back there. Uh, I apologize in advance for my language. You're fucking awesome. You overcome more than I ever have just waking up every morning. And legit, seriously, the fact that you became a pro wrestler, I'm only assuming because it's something that you wanted to do. You didn't let anybody tell you that you couldn't do it, and I'm positive people along the way said there's absolutely no way. I met you briefly back there. I saw something special watching you in this ring. It's, it's a hell of a story, and I, look at me, you've done it so far, but don't ever let anybody tell you that you can't be whatever you want to be. Yeah. That goes for everybody, this kid's an inspiration, seriously. Absolutely amazing, and everyone knows that was uh, uh, CM Punk. So uh, uh, he he really admires you. So uh, before we we have the backstory of why he was there and why he was talking to you, tell everyone uh, uh, what makes you so unique. Why uh, Sports Illustrated did a story on you. Uh, ESPN has covered you. Tell us. Well, I was born with a disability known as cerebral palsy. Basically, what cerebral palsy is, it's a form of brain damage. It's on the left side of my brain, so it affects the right side of my body. The most noticeable area in which you can see it is my right hand and my arm. Kind of always walk with a slight, but through physical therapy until the age of seven, I kind of kind of worked that out. I was born a month premature. I was born just over a pound, so it's pretty much a miracle that I'm even alive. Yeah. Um, around 10 months old is when people discovered that I was well, I was born with cerebral palsy. Basically, my dad was working at a steel mill, so he was at home with me all the time, while my mom, who was a printer, she was at a job. So as my dad was taking care of me, he would take me out of my crib, and he would set me on the ground with all my toys around me, and no matter where the toys were, I would clinch my right side, and I would go to grab the toys with my left hand, no matter where they were. So they figured something was wrong with me. That's when they took me to the doctor, and that's when I was officially diagnosed with cerebral palsy. And as a kid, I figured I was pretty much normal. You know, I did all the normal things, you know, cartoons and Ninja Turtles and all that fun stuff and video games. But as I got older and I got into school, that's when I started to realize not everybody's like me. And kids started to make fun of me and tease me for something that basically was out of my control. I mean, kids are going to ridicule what they don't understand. You're, you're being kind so, of ridiculed and bullied because of your disability. Yeah, um, you know. Mm -hmm. People would call me names like, you know, retard or gimpy or, and stuff like that. Just, yeah. you know, it, it, it hurt my feelings as a six-year-old kid. And on top of that, 
my home life wasn't the best. My my mom and dad were constantly at odds because my mom was developing a an addiction for for drugs, uh, oh. more specifically crack and cocaine. And as time went on, um, there was only one thing that kind of kept me away from um, the reality of the situation with my mom and dad. What was and that? situation with school and that was professional wrestling and that was because my grandma my grandma actually got me into pro wrestling she wait wait, big, wait what do you mean she got you into pro wrestling well she she was uh she was a big fan dating back to the 80s she loved the nwa she loved wwf and she was a big fan of hulk hogan so that kind of love for wrestling um she shared with me and we would order the pay-per-views and we would watch monday night raw or superstars of wrestling and I didn't have to think about you know the, the realities of my real life all the time because I got lost in these larger than life heroic figures. So um, around the age of eight years old, she was diagnosed with bone cancer, oh. and uh, she she died on April first, ninety five, and um, that was my mom's mom. So she kind of used that as an excuse. My mother did when she passed to kind of delve deeper into her addiction, and that's when you know toys and video game systems started disappearing. She would sell my dad stuff. It got to the point where my dad had to sleep with his jeans on with his wallet in his pocket so my mom wouldn't steal money from him. And, you know, they ended up getting divorced and we ended up, st me and my brothers ended up staying with my mom. We were constantly evicted from houses. But despite all this, again, the, the one thing that kept me on the straight and narrow that kept me thinking in a positive mindset with my love for professional wrestling. And I knew that I somehow wanted to be a part of it, but I, I just didn't know how because of my disability. Maybe I could be an announcer. Maybe I could be a writer. Never thought I could be a wrestler until I saw Zach Gowan who wrestled with one leg in 2003. And that's when I kind of thought maybe this is something that's a possibility. Well, so Zach Gowan uh, was kind of the impetus, the, the, the inspiration there to say, hey, this guy has a disability. What? <laughs> Look, why can't I do it? Right, yeah. You know, when I saw him do that moonsault on the big show with one leg, I was blown away. And I, I just thought to myself, this guy has one limb. He's overcome cancer. He's overcome a rough home life. Why can't I overcome what I have with, you know, I have both of my arms. Why can't I try to pursue professional wrestling? So I, I started weightlifting um, at the age of 15. At and home? Uh, yeah, at home. At, my dad actually bought me a weight set and he purposely put it in the garage. And it was for Christmas in the winter time, so I would have to go out into the garage in the winter with like three layers of clothes and a jacket Jeez. to prove that I wanted to start lifting weights. Yeah, you know, work and I for started it. work for it. And, uh, yeah, and I started with like twenty pounds, and uh, you know I've maxed out today at like two forty five. So I've come a long way, and um, so with pursuing weights and everything, I started to figure out. Um, I live in Cleveland, Ohio. They had an independent wrestling promotion called Cleveland All Pro Wrestling. So I started going to those events and um, figured out they had a school. And that's when I decided at the age of 18 that I was going to try to be a wrestler because I didn't want to live in regret. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. So, so uh, uh, the people who ran the school, didn't they say to you, hey, kid, you have a disability. There's no way you get, we can't train you to do this. There was a lot of doubters. Um, my trainers were uh, JT Lightning, Josh yeah. Prohibition, and Johnny Gargano. And yeah. They had kind of already knew me from coming to shows, and I, I kind of got my foot in the door by selling tickets. Um, so okay. they kind of knew who I was, um, but I think they highly doubted that I would be able to make it as a wrestler because, you know, through my time of wrestling training and talking to other people, you always see these people coming to the training school who are, you know, athletes, football players, baseball players. They, they think wrestling is going to be a walk in the park, and they end up quitting after, you know, a day or two. So to think a guy with cerebral palsy – who's only five foot four is going to make it, you know, the odds are pretty strong against pretty me. Slim, but, pretty slim, pretty slim. No matter how much I got beat up, no matter how difficult the task were to do, I kept coming back for more. You know, we would go step by step, and JT would always tell me, you know, this is this headlock is a basic wrestling maneuver. If you can't do this, we can't continue training you. If you can't do this drop down, we can't continue training you because that's you need to know how to do this as a wrestler. And every time something was put in front of me, I figured out a way to do it to the best of my ability. Wow. Wow. And um, after three or four months, I was in the ring having my first matches in 2006. So you're, uh, uh, that was 2006, and you, you've, had, uh, you've had quite a, uh, uh, quite a storied uh, career thus far. And uh, I think what we'd like to do right now is take a look at you in action uh, to show the fans that 
despite this disability, you can, it's the can-do message. Let's take a look right now at a really great can-do video. Absolutely amazing. Boy, oh boy. I, I mean, you're, uh, you're amazing in the ring. Do you sometimes surprise yourself? Uh, every day, you know, I, I mean, like I said, if you would have asked me, you know, six or seven years ago, hey, one day you're going to be a professional wrestler and, and you're going to be wrestling, you know, and teaming with some of the people you've always looked up to, I would have thought you were nuts, you know, because I, yeah. I didn't think it was possible. But now um, I, I'm so happy that I got involved in wrestling because without it, it, it kind of molded the person that I am. And, you know, because of it, I've had, no matter if I never go far than I already have, I had moments and experiences that I wouldn't trade for anything in the world. And I wouldn't have got because of professional wrestling. You know, I got to live my dream. Well, that, uh, now you mentioned uh, Zach Allen being an inspiration. Uh, have you spoke with him? Have you, uh, have you wrestled with him or? Yeah. You know, when I first started training, um, once I had a few of my matches, he was actually on a show for Cleveland All Pro Wrestling, and I, I, I took an opportunity to sit down and talk to him because I wanted to pick his brain and figure out how do you succeed as a wrestler with a disability. And I remember he took the time to sit down and talk to me, and it was just kind of uh, mind-blowing. So um, earlier in the program, uh, we show the, uh, the clip of uh, CM Punk really, as they say in the business, putting you over. So uh, yeah. what, what was the, uh, the, the situation there? How did that happen? Well, it was kind of weird because I, I had wrestled for a while for AAW in Chicago where the incident occurred, but I always wrestled in pre-show matches. So um, a few days before the event, um, I was told that I was on the regular show and, and I was team Cabana for the tag team titles, which in my mind didn't make any sense. I was like, okay, well, whatever. But... I've always loved Colt. I've always went to Colt for advice. Uh, it was my first time getting a chance to team with him, so I was really pumped He's about it. Great guy, uh, great guy. Yeah, Colt's an awesome guy. And so I, I go to the show, I meet with Colt, we're talking over the match, I'm getting my gear on to go work out in the ring. And uh, as I'm doing that, go downstairs, there's a doorway. I'd always shook hands with a lot of guys. I looked to my left, and there was a guy that I hadn't said hello to, and I looked to my right. And he turns his head to the side, and it's CM Punk. I'm like, oh, oh, God, it's CM Whoa. Punk, the, the WWE champion. This was six days after Money in the Bank. Yeah. And here he is right in front of me at this independent show in Chicago. So I very slyly said hi to the guy to my left. 
I said, hi, I'm Greg, nice to meet you. And then I very slickly turned to CM Punk, so I didn't look like a nervous wreck. And I go, hi, I'm Greg, nice to meet you. And he looked at me and he smirked and he just said, hi. And then I went up to my buddies and I kind of told him, wow, that was really weird. It, it almost seemed like CM Punk knew who I was. He did because apparently Colton him had kind of made up this, this whole plan to uh, basically publicly endorse me in the ring so Punk could have a video to go viral. You know, he had been doing stuff earlier in the re- week, like showing up to the uh, San Diego Comic Con, yeah, and that video yeah. went viral because he was calling out Triple H and everything. So little did I know, I was kind of the next thing on the CM Punk viral video tour. So we do the match. Colt puts me over on the mic, which, you know, if it stopped there, would have been an incredible moment because, again, he's a great guy, great wrestler. I respect him so much. Tells me to take a bow, go to the back with the mic, and I, I can see that he's going to grab CM Punk. Like I, and he, he brings him out, and I'm thinking, great, I'm going to be in the background of this WWE storyline. And then, uh, you know, I'm hoping someone notices who I am. And Punk comes in the ring, and he extends his hand and asks, are you okay? Hey, you're effing awesome before he even grabs the mic. And wow. I feel this lump in my throat, and I'm like, man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break down. Like, I hope he just starts talking about the title now or something. Yeah, CM Punk knows who you are. Yeah. yeah, and uh, then I just lost it. I just started bawling like a little baby because I it's hard to convey um, how passionate and how much I love wrestling. And, and, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of independent guys out there who feel the same way that, you know, we sacrifice so much just for a chance to be recognized, just a chance to just for a chance to make it to WWE or TNA. And I feel like sometimes I've had to work 10 times harder because I have a disability. So do you have that one moment where CM Punk, the WWE champion, and Colt Cabana, who's so underrated, comes out on this indie show and tells me what an inspiration I am? It was very overwhelming, it, but it basically made the last five or six years that I've sacrificed and, and tried to buck my butt to prove to people I'm not just a wrestler with a disability. You know, yeah. I, I am a professional wrestler. It finally justified all the hard work that I went through. And if it ends today, I'm very happy with that moment. Like that kind of capped up yeah. off my career for me. I, I've got to ask you this question because you brought up the disability several times. Do guys ever come over to you uh, in the dressing room and say, hey, look, I'm going to try and take it easy with, with you, man, because, you know, you have this disability. I, I mean, does that happen? Um, the funny thing about that is more so than anything else, all the heels will always walk up to me and they'll kind of go, is it okay if I, if I make fun of your hand a little bit? And I, yeah. I totally encourage it because – Everywhere I go, I'm a good guy. And yeah. if you're a bad guy, natural heat is going to be right on this thing right here. You know, I always wondered, why? Why did you do this to me, Jesus? And it, <laughs> it, it was for professional wrestling gimmick right here. So I, I encourage guys to do it. I, I give them pointers they, they on all, how to do they it. All say, they all say the Lord works in strange ways. Well, he definitely does. And, yeah. you know, um, I feel like uh, in a way – I always wondered why I was given this. And it wasn't just to tell a heel in, in the backstage locker room, go ahead and make fun of me. You know, yeah. this thing that I always thought was a curse ended up being a blessing because because That's of right. it, I get an opportunity to not only live my dream as a wrestler, but to get out there and to tell my story to other people with disabilities, other people who had a rough upbringing, people that look at their situation every day and go, I don't know if I can overcome this. And, and if they can look at my story and go, wow, this guy is – is doing all of this despite what he was dealt in life. Maybe I can overcome my own problems. That makes it all worth it to me. Well, you are you are truly uh, an inspiration. I a, a lot of wrestling people don't know that I work for a, a nonprofit company uh, based out of Pennsylvania called Ahead A H E D D, and um, uh, I we the organization helps persons with disabilities uh, realize their dreams and find. Uh, uh, employment and we do job coaching and when I see the look on some of the faces of uh, some of the participants at ahead who uh, go to a job and become successful at things they wanted to do and I hear your story it just it gives me it's goosebump Phil so that's great one of the um, uh, well this has got to be a segue but, but one of the things that also has to be great for you is that you've been given the opportunity now to go into the 16th annual Super 8 tournament for uh, ECWA. Yeah, you know, um, I've always read so much about the ECWA, being a big fan of Pro Wrestling Illustrated through the years. You know, 
It's all. I remember that magazine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you you might have had some sort of part in that, right? I did. I did. Yeah. And you can go to PWI underscore online and uh, see they've now got a great digital version out. So go visit my uh, my friends yeah, there. I saw but, it. But, yeah, yeah. But but I, but you're I, uh, you're in the ECWA Super Eight. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like they, you know, PWI was the first place that exposed me to it, and. You know, it's definitely the longest running and most prestigious tournament in independent wrestling. So many guys that have been involved with the tournament got propelled to the next level. Level. I'm name, about name, name some. Of, name some of those guys. Um, Christopher Daniels, right. Paul Lundin, Chris Saban, Brian Kendrick, Davey Richards, yeah. AJ Styles, Brian. You Daniels. studied. Wow. It's a it's a okay. of wrestling. So it's April seventh. Yes. Um, ECWAProWrestling.com. Right now, everybody in the world is watching you, okay? And we, I'm the director here, and I'm going to point into the camera, and you've got about 30 seconds to tell us all why you are going to win the ECWA Super 8 this year. Are you ready? The pressure is on. Hit it. So, this year, the handicapped hero, Gregor Iron, gets an opportunity in the most prestigious tournament in independent wrestling, the Super 8. Why will I win? Well, I've overcome the odds my entire life. There's there's seven other guys trying to win this thing. But they're going to be no obstacle for the handicapped hero. And by the time it's all said and done, everyone's going to realize why I am going to be the winner of the ECWA Super 8 and why I am one-armed and dangerous pal. Well, that's unbelievable. By the way, you mentioned to uh, us earlier that uh, Hulk Hogan was one of your uh, inspirations for wanting to get into pro wrestling. Also, you used to yeah. watch him, with, and you never got to meet him. Well, we got a surprise for you. Hang on. Oh, wow. Well, you know something, brother. I've admired <laughs> you, man, from day one as well. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Body slam. He's out of here. I, wow. lost, I lost my earpiece there, but it was well worth it. Uh, thank you once again for being an inspiration to uh, everyone, not just in the... Uh, pro wrestling field, but everyone in life to show that can do message. And man, you're a can doer. Thank you. I really appreciate it. For OneWrestling.com, Bill After, we'll see you at the Super 8. Yeah.